Good morning, everybody. Another day, another set of results. And uh, here we go again, as I say often. Uh, this time we've got some results. Uh, there's three holes from Apollo, which is the farthest eastern side of that core drill area. We saw extensions of the mineralized system, you know, some very good uh, extensions, 80 to 120 metres extensions. We've shown continuity, so some high grades. And uh, most importantly... The system that we saw getting better at depth at Rising Sun is doing exactly the same thing at Apollo. So uh, a very good set of results building this project block by block. So overall, we hit in all 158, a 100 metre wide stone, parallel to the rails of the ladder, but going across multiple high grade structures. I think there was something like... Uh, it extended five and infilled two, so seven high-grade structures overall. Uh, we saw that 100 metres, 100 and a half metres, average 3.4 grams gold equivalent, which was 3.1 grams gold and 0.1% antimony. But most importantly, within that, there was some higher-grade zones that were very continuous, 28.6 metres at 10.9 grams gold equivalent, which was 10.3 uh, grams gold and 0.2% antimony the estimated true width of that zone was 17 meters so very nice but within that again we saw these multiple high grade zones 1.4 meters at 142.8 uh, and 9.7 meters at 10.6 which included some very high grade zones 3.1 at 24.4 so going from the wider zone right down to these very high grade zones. And, and that's what uh, we really like about this deposit as we're starting to see it develop. No doubt there's some uh, very high grade zones along the rungs of the ladder uh, and, and they're on average 2.4 to 3.8 metres median width. So, uh, you know, mechanical mining width potential. Um, their extensions are 20 to 40 metres up to 100 metres long and very extensive in the up and down sense. Uh, over 500 metres, 600 metres, we can trace individual vein sets. But what happens when they start to form together is you see these wider zones developing. In this case, 17 metres true width uh, along, uh, if you like, the extensions, the east-west extensions or parallel to the rails of the ladder. So that means that this will be mined uh, potentially, you know, no economic studies haven't been done, but the way we start thinking about this is the high grade uh, veins will be mined uh, along these thinner long hole potential stopes. But when they start coming together and they form these blocks, we can see more sub-level stoping methods that, that could potentially be employed here. Uh, that has uh, a, a lot of implications around the tons and the tons that you can mine in a project like this. Uh, so high grade, thinner, two and a half to four metre wide zones, mixing with 10 to 20 metre wide zones, which is exactly what we see in the historic mines. That's exactly what the old timers did. They mine from these plus ounce numbers. So they were mining very different grades, but they were mining things centimetres to metres wide along that northwest trend. And then they had some broader open stopes uh, within within those historic mines up to 20 metres thick. So, again, uh, they certainly knew what they were doing in the old, older, olden days, uh, and, and we're seeing that replicated in our modern drill data. So these uh, holes are absolutely some of the deepest holes we've seen in Apollo to date, um, you know, down eight, eight to 900 metres downhole, uh, so around about vertically, four to 700 metres uh, vertically below the surface. Uh, we see that increase in grade in these epizonal deposits come in at Sunday Creek at around about 500 metres. So we're well and truly into that sweet spot. We've seen continuity of these high grades, so we're seeing more and more, of course. But uh, we, we drilled two of these holes, 149 and 149W1, uh, fairly close together, uh, sort of 15 to 20 metres spacing by the time they're pointing the target zone. So we saw those same veins replicated in both the primary hole and, and the wedge, that's what the W stands for, the wedge hole where we wedged off. So uh, again, lots of confidence building as we continue to hit these 
structures both along the strike or along the longitudinal rungs, um, but also in the up and down dip sense as well. So lots of very good information, as I say, building this block by block. So there's so much happening around this project now. Of course, uh, we've got seven rigs drilling. The eighth is at site and we'll start drilling uh, within the next days. Uh, one rig is focused along the extensions outside the core area, seven rigs in the core area drilling, um, variably half and can't have three and a half rigs, but three to four extending the, the project and or three and four infill drilling at any one point. So uh, the, that's how the drill rigs are. We, we just finished the IP. That was our last press release along the 12 kilometre trend. Uh, so we're uh, currently all interpreting and processing all that data. We've got the gravity. We've got the passive seismic work we've done with fleet. Uh, that's all being incorporated together. Lots of soil sampling. And then, of course, the project has taken another level in terms of the work we're doing to permit a decline. That uh, permit should be ready to be applied for by the middle of the year. So we're doing a lot of hydrogeological work, a lot of engineering work. Actually, one rig is at the moment just drilling geotechnical holes around the portal and around the decline itself and, and around the airway that uh, that is being proposed there. Uh, lots of fauna and flora studies, et cetera. So there's a, there's a lot of people on this project as we continue to de-risk it, both from the expiration to the infill stage and then looking at the larger expiration around the project, which is ripe for the picking. So this project is made up of two key components, the goal, which is 80% in situ value recoverable, and the 20% comes from the antimony. Without a doubt, uh, it is a front-facing goal project, but it has a, a key component of antimony. It is a very large antimony project that's, that's developing to one of the key Western world uh, ex-China-Russia deposits. In terms of the uses of antimony, we know 20% of it's used in solar cells to clarify the glass, but it's critical for around its defense purposes. Uh, and we note that just in the one of the US executive order on reciprocal tariffs, everyone's talking tariffs, uh, antimony was exempted uh, from those tariffs. So it, it included antimony ore, which is what we're talking about, antimony rock and concentrate. So just highlighting the criticality of antimony and also it's very rare supply um, or lack of supply around the Western world. So more great results from Sunday Creek. The project continues to deliver time and time again. This is a very rare asset. We delivered two more 100 gram intersections in these drill holes. Uh, that hit rate is better than anything else that we can see on earth. Sunday Creek is a very rare asset and has been ranked now as such in the industry. It's, a, it's a, in terms of that expiration target, a multi-million ounce, eight to 10 gram or exceeding 10 gram gold equivalent project. It's one of the few tier one independently owned, uber high grade, multi-million ounce potential greenfield projects that uh, is growing very quickly. So that's what makes this project so special as global investors are seeking consolidation and supportive of growth via high quality acquisitions across the gold space. It's where we're consuming ourselves and, and this project stands out there with a very good shareholder base that protects this asset and will allow us to grow this project uh, and, and de deliver on what we've clearly stated to, to make this bigger through scale, grade and on a, a district scale exploration opportunity. Mm -hmm.